We are inside NRG Stadium. It is D'Amico Ryan's day. He's about to have his introductory press conference. We want to get some reaction from some very familiar faces in the building that wanted to see D'Amico Ryan's take his first press conference as the Houston Texans head coach. Let's check it out. Like, I'm super excited because a player, a former player now becoming a head coach at the franchise where he played is just tremendous and I think it's going to be super super exciting for what the future holds. You've seen his path he went from linebacker to a coach to a defensive coordinator to number one defense in the league and now head coach. Yeah. I mean how hard is that to do especially the level that he did it at? It's difficult but the thing is I think uh, just the discipline and the intensity and the drive that he took from playing to uh, that job itself and now being the head coach here uh, I mean it goes to the testament as who he was and who he has been. What are some of the things that you heard about him? Obviously, you played with a lot of linebackers that really missed his presence mm -hmm. when he left here. But what did you know about D'Amico just secondhand from some of your teammates? Yeah, no, I heard that he was like a great leader. I mean, everybody listened to D'Amico. Like he was, I mean, I think their, his nickname is Cap. Right. So, um, so pretty much, I mean, he just ran. And he was like the heart and soul of that defense, and he ran and led men. Love seeing this guy back in the building once again, Andre Johnson. Dre, why was it so important for you to be here for D'Amico's press conference? It was an exciting day. Um, um, just from the time we got in the news that he was going to be the head coach, uh, just knowing what type of guy D'Amico is as a player, as a person, as, as a man, um, I'm not surprised that he received this job. Uh, we always knew he had the nickname captain for a reason, so uh, he was a great leader, um, a great leader of men. You, as you can see when he was in San Francisco and the way the guys played for him. So, uh, you know, it's just an exciting time, you know, for Texans football. So, uh, you know, he's my guy, and uh, he's always been my guy. We've always stayed in touch. Um, he actually texted me a few times a couple weeks ago, actually before he got the job and during the season. So. Um, I'm just happy. I'm excited for him. How did you find out the news that D'Amico got the job, and what was your reaction? Um, well, you saw a few things where they were saying that he was the uh, leading candidate. And, um, you know, I was just like, man, I just hope this goes through. And, uh, you know, when it happened, man, I just – one of my friends called me, and they was like, you know, D'Amico got the job. And, you know, me, I'm just like, you BS. And he was like, <laughs> nah. He was like, he got it. So – I was very excited, very happy. Um, I knew he was busy. I sent him a text message, you know, just to congratulate him. Um, he texted me back that night, you know, just for saying how happy he was, you know, that uh, he was, you know, ready to get started and get it turned around. All right, you were a leader when he got here as a rookie. So what do you rem remember about him as a rookie? And did you sort of think that one day, hey, this guy could be a head coach somewhere? Yeah, he always had it in him. Um, you know, he always had it in him. He always was a you know just a great leader from the time he got here um he was very quiet at first but you know once he you know found his way around and fit it in you know he uh, he just took charge um and he had to be the leader of our defense you know very you know at a young age and very early in his career so uh he just took charge and you know like i said we started giving him the, the nickname captain and uh it just stuck with him and you know i'm just happy he's back here all right, any chance that you might uh, join a coaching staff once again? We remember you briefly, you did a little bit on the coaching staff here. Is there any chance that you might come back now that D'Amico's in charge? I've been getting asked that question <laughs> all day, every day since this hire has happened. Um, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say no, but you never know. Um, you know, it's his time right now, and uh, I'm excited for him and just happy to be here. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm – you know, I'll still be around. So um, whether I'm coaching or not, you know, I'll still be around. Whatever he needs me to do, I'm here to help. We love to hear it, Dre. Love to see you around in the building. Thanks so I much. Appreciate it. All right, we've got Trey the Truth here joining us for the introductory press conference for D'Amico Ryans. Trey, what brings you out today? Why did you want to come out and, and see D'Amico take the stage for the first time Definitely as head coach? It's all about support, man. You know, one thing about Houston is we one real tight circle, you know, and it's good to bring something new and refreshing to the, uh, the city and the team. So we here for the support, you know. Bun says that he thinks his team is really close to a championship. Now with a leader like D'Amico, he thinks that they can take that next step. What do you think about the potential this team has with a guy like D'Amico? I think the, the, the main things is I feel like we've always had different pieces of the puzzle. It's just a matter of everything aligning at once. And I pray that's what, what's about to happen, you know, because 
sometimes when everything's not aligning at once, we may lack in certain areas. So now we got different formulas sitting there. So if it all go together the right way, who knows where we can be. All right, you're big in the community of Houston. You were just named Humanitarian of the Year by XXL. Congrats on that, first of all. Uh, what do you remember about D'Amico and his time here in Houston and just being out and about in the community? Uh, he, he was definitely, I, I want to say he was the leader of his time when he was here. He definitely was ten toes down and, you know, one of the captains and, and doing what needed to be done. So even with him finishing elsewhere, now he's came Bring home to finish, you, you know what I'm saying? So. It's going to be something super, super amazing, man. Um, from the first time I met him years ago, throughout the draft process and on the college field and playing against Alabama, he's been the same way, been a leader. You can get get that from the instant that you meet him. And, you know, over the years, he's perfected his craft and got better and better. And now that leads to where we're at today. And just uh, come here and support a former player, your brother, been in the locker room with him, you know, wore the emblem with him. It's just a dream come true. There were so many of you former players in the audience just watching him and taking it in. Is there anything that you feel like people didn't know about D'Amico that they probably got from watching his press conference today? I think he kind of summed it up well. You know, the stories he told, you know, those stories emulate him. And um, when I got here to Houston, um, I seen the exact same thing. But you can see it if you just look from afar also. If you wasn't a, you was a casual fan of football and you watched uh, the 49ers play any given time, you can just see what he means to those guys on that team. You know, every time any position makes a play, they come up to him. They have a grin on their face. They're excited. If it's a bad moment in the game, he's able to talk to those guys through and help them out also. What about talking about how he's evolved his knowledge of the offense? You played with him as a player, but now just being a coach for so many years and working with so many different coaches, what do you sort of think about his plans for the offense? It seems like he's learned under a lot of different coaches. I think that's the best time, best thing about it, you know, whether you play this game for a long time or if you're around this game, have a chance to be around it for a long time, you get different views of this game. And I think being able to put all that into your bank, you know, having different defensive coordinators, learning different schemes, then being on the other side of it and seeing the different ways that offenses come to mind and the way they want to attack you, I think that makes a complete coach. A lot of times coaches look at it as being one-minded, but when they're able to see both sides of the game, it makes them a complete package. All right, what about Andre Johnson? Does he belong in the Hall of Fame? Oh, absolutely. You know, that Hall of Fame process is all tricky. You know, the question is not about the question is, is he a Hall of Famer? So that's the good part about it. He's definitely a Hall of Famer. It's just about when he's going to get in. So, you know, he's always had my support, every fan in this city, my family support, every one of my friends support about it. So um, his resume speaks for itself. I don't want to just keep beating a dead horse, <laughs> but uh, hopefully this is the year. We hope so, too. Jay Joe, always a pleasure seeing you. Uh, no doubt. Thanks for having me, Deep. All right, joining me now, Brian Cushing. Haven't talked to him in a few years. Father of three now. I think the first time I interviewed you, you just had the one. Yeah. And so now you're a seasoned dad, and you're back here to see D'Amico Ryans as head coach. It seems so full circle, doesn't it? It does. Uh, pretty pretty surreal. Um, you know, as I was talking about previously, it was a guy that we always knew would be a head coach eventually. Um, but just to be able to come back here is, uh, is, is crazy, but so well-deserved. I was watching a mic'd up of him with you. You were a rookie. He was sort of coaching you up on the field, and he said, you're not a rookie. And you said, I'm not a rookie. It was week three of your rookie season, and he talked about how much he expected of you, and he talked about how you were like a little brother to him. Yeah. He mentioned you in the press conference as well. Tell us a little bit about your relationship with, with D'Amico. Yeah, just, uh, just an incredible friend, um, someone that I was so fortunate enough to play with but also be a rookie when he was a little bit older as well. Um, I couldn't have asked for a better guy to come in and mentor me. Um, the amount that he helped, uh, I would not be able to explain. Um, just just a, a great friend and has been, you know, since the day I've met him. Uh, someone I love playing with, um, you know, someone I love still staying in communication with and just, you know, getting a chip. Sorry, Mark's like bumping me over here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you want me to repeat that? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, no, D'Amico's just been an incredible friend. Um, you know, someone that I was extremely lucky to uh, have um, as a mentor. Um, just very, very lucky and, and blessed to be able to have the opportunity to play with him. Um, just can't even tell you how much he's done for me as a player, uh, as a person, and just overall. Um, great friend, always has been, always will be. There are so many young players on this team. I mean, how excited are you for the guys that are just going into their second year, all these new rookies that are about to come here through the draft and free agency, to get to learn under a guy like D'Amico and what he could possibly do for their careers? Absolutely. It's, it's an incredible opportunity for them. Um, he's going to be the perfect guy to learn from. Uh, he's got experience as a player. He's got experience now as a coach. Um, I, I know, you know, this is the right guy for the job. 
He talks a lot about not having an ego in the draft room. I mean, is that sort of what made him such a good leader in the locker room? You've been around a lot of veteran players, but we're, what really separated him from some of the rest? Yeah, unselfishness, right? Yeah, and with him, it was always about what's best for the team. Uh, he talks it, and like you know, Nick had talked about, he, he, that's genuinely him. You know, the the, the overall you know well-being of the team and uh, what's best for them is what, what's always the most important to him. Did you know that he was going to be a head coach someday? Was that, or is this sort of a surprise seeing his career evolve? No, he, we knew he'd be a head coach. Okay. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Just, just playing with him, and he loved coaching when he was playing. Right? It was, it was one of those deals. If you had a question, that's the guy to ask. Whether it was about football, whether it was about life outside of football, whether it was about the NFLPA, there was one guy to ask in the locker room. Um, so we knew that it would be his career once he was done playing and, and some that he just has transitioned to into so well. All right, he's got three kids, you've got three kids. You were a coach on the staff here briefly. Does it ever sort of give you that inkling to sort of come back, get back into coaching again? Yeah, um, <laughs> you know, I, when I was done, I was, I was kind of taking some time off and um, it was tough, you know, NFL was, was tough. I hadn't seen my family that much and kind of considered myself to be done, um, you know, but when, when this guy's name started popping up and then came back here, um, you know, that's one guy that makes you reconsider a lot. So uh, you never know. All right, you never know. Love to see it. Kush, thanks so much for the time. Of course, thank you for having me. And there you have it. The buzz is real. Everyone's so excited to see D'Amico Ryan's back in the building, this time as head coach. Lots to look forward to in the 2023 season. You can check out more of our coverage on HoustonTexans.com.